a common question that many people have who are considering cataract or lens replacement surgery is that if they choose one lens for one eye, can they choose a different type of lens for their second eye? And if they do, will that work? Will they see fine? And will they like their vision? Well, I'm happy to say that absolutely mixing different types of lenses between the eyes works very well for the vast majority of patients. We often place one implant in one eye and a different implant in the other eye for patients for various reasons. For example, I'm gonna share in this video a patient who had the panoptics lens placed in both eyes to see far, mid, and near. And his result was that he could see near and he could see great far away. He could see the TV and he could see street signs when he drove but he noticed that for some reason, and this is very unusual with the panoptics lens, he couldn't see mid-range. He described his vision from three to eight feet to be out of focus, from one to two feet from his eye to be in focus, three to eight feet from his eye to be out of focus, and beyond eight feet to be out of focus. Additionally, this individual noticed a dark crescent out to the side of his vision from each eye and it was persistent and it was bothersome. Whenever people see this dark crescent out to the side, it's super common after cataract or lens replacement surgery and it tends to go away. But this gentleman was very persistent that it was very annoying, was not going away and he didn't like the inability to see between three and eight feet clearly. In other words, he couldn't see his desktop computer in focus through panoptics lenses in both eyes. So we had to find a solution to help this gentleman see at all distances and enable him to see his desktop computer to regain that clear vision from three to eight feet. And the twist was we needed to also find a way if possible to help get rid of that crescent that he was noticing. Our plan was to remove the panoptics from the left eye, replace it with the Vividi lens to help him see mid-range. And then when we inserted the Vividi lens, we performed a procedure called reverse optic capture, where we moved his Vividi lens optic or the round portion that enables the person to focus. We moved it closer toward the front of his eye when we inserted the lens. And I'll show you some video from his surgery to help you understand what reverse optic capture is. As a background, the panoptics lens generally gives very good vision, 18 inches to infinity, and it's considered a trifocal lens. And for the vast majority of people, it works very well. It gives them near, mid, and far away vision, in focus, clear, without glasses. It does have one side effect. Patients will notice a halo around lights at night through the panoptics lens. The Vividi lens is considered an extended depth of focus or EDOF lens, and it gives less of a halo effect. It generally is used to help patients see far and mid range. It's a little weaker than the panoptics lens for clear near vision. So the patients who have the Vividi lens, we advise them, you'll see your desktop computer and far away. But if you wanna see things up close, you'll need reading glasses if you just have the Vividi lens. So let me first show you briefly the video of the trifocal lens implant, the panoptics lens implant in the eye. And then I'm gonna show you how we remove it, how we insert the Vividi lens, but we insert the Vividi lens in a reverse optic capture configuration. And then I wanna let you hear directly from the patient about what he noticed one day after he had intraocular lens exchange where we removed his panoptics and placed the Vividi lens. Here we can see the panoptics lens inside the capsular bag of our patient's left eye. Importantly, the anterior capsular axis is about five millimeters in diameter and the posterior capsule is intact. With the eye filled with viscoelastic, we elevate the anterior capsule with a Donenfeld spatula. 
We then infuse Helon GV viscoelastic underneath the anterior capsular rim to visco dissect the lens implant optic and haptics from within the capsular bag. A Connor wand is then used to dial the lens out of the capsular bag and bring the lens haptics and optic into the anterior chamber where we use micro forceps to secure the lens optic and IOL cutters to bisect the lens optic. The panoptics lens is then removed through the 2.8 millimeter primary incision in two pieces. The Vividi lens is then inserted into the eye and placed inside the capsular bag. Irrigation and aspiration is performed to remove the viscoelastic behind and in front of the IOL. The Helon GV is placed into the anterior chamber to stabilize the lens and capsular bag complex. The Connor wand is then used to lift each edge of the Vividi lens optic up and over the anterior capsular rim. We methodically maneuver the Vividi lens optic anterior to the anterior capsular rim on both sides of the lens haptics which are left inside the capsular bag. We then flush the Helon GV from the anterior chamber with balanced salt solution through 27 gauge cannulas to gently remove the viscoelastic without altering the reverse optic capture configuration of the lens optic that we have worked carefully to create. The cornea incisions are then stromal hydrated and the eye is verified to be watertight with a physiologic intraocular pressure. This patient's surgery went smoothly. We were able to perform intraocular lens exchange, remove his panoptics, place the vividity, and move the vividity into a reverse optic capture configuration. So, how did the patient see the next day? So you're how old? 51. And you came in in March, you were wearing progressive right. glasses mm -hmm. to see far and near. And you, without your glasses, you couldn't see far or near. Right. So he's farsighted. And his prescription's about a plus 150, plus two. But he sees well with glasses. And so we had a discussion and you opted to have premium lens replacement with the pan optics, yes. correct? And so we did that. Um, April 3rd, we did the left eye. A week later, we did the right eye. Right. What did you notice after we put in the pan optics? So right away, I had two black crescents. Yeah. And the optometrist said they would go away. Okay. And they never did. Plus, I couldn't see between three and eight feet. Could you see up close? Could you read I, your I could, I could. Yes, I could look right here, no problem. But not everything is right here, not everything is 20 feet away. Could you see so. street signs when you drove, watch TV without glasses, in focus? Yes, because my TV is pretty far away from me. I couldn't see a computer screen. That was a problem. Okay, got it. And so we usually see the individuals at like a day after surgery, and then we saw you maybe three or four weeks later. And let's think here. So if we did your second eye on April 10th, um, you saw Dr. D a month afterwards, and you still said it's blurry at 48 feet, and you were still noticing the crescents. Right. And were the crescents getting less pronounced between day one and month one? They were the same, and like I said, when I would focus on something close, the black crescents would close in. Okay, and would the would the crescents go away if you kind of put your hands out to the side? It, it would mask it, just because the dark lines of my hand would just mask the the black crescents. Okay, so then I saw you on um, June nineteenth. Today is June twenty eighth, and we. We thought, well, everything looks good with your eyes, uh, but we're going to try and put in a different lens implant. So we're going to remove the left lens implant. The, so you had a panoptics lens in both eyes. We're going to remove the left panoptics. We're going to put in a vividity in that eye, in his left eye. And not only are we going to do that to give him three to eight feet mid range vision, um, but we positioned his left implant in a configuration called reverse optic capture, where we place the optic of his lens implant a little more toward the front of the eye, and we keep the arms of the lens, the haptics we call them, in the 
normal structure that usually holds the entire lens called the capsular bag. And when you had your pan optics the first time, did you notice these crescents the first day after surgery? Very first day. Okay, and then you woke up today, you're now, we did today's Wednesday, so we did your surgery 24 hours ago. What do you notice on your left eye? I have no crescent over here. Everything's clear. So totally happy with that. And you have mid-range on your left eye. Yes, yeah, so far, yeah. And the combination, so when you're looking at that, three to eight feet, it's more in focus than it was before. The, the right eye that you have not messed with, mm -hmm. again, is still, I can still tell it's a little bit blurry, but the left eye compensates for it. Good. So, I so still have the, the crescent. Yeah, so the hope is that you'll, the eyes will complement one another and you'll tune things out. Best case scenario is we're gonna leave your right eye alone. Worst case scenario is you can't get used to it on the right eye. And then probably my plan for your right eye, and I hopefully hopefully we'll have to do this, is I would do a lens exchange on your right eye, keep you in a pan optics, but do that reverse optic capture mm -hmm. with the pan optics on the right eye. Sure. But we'll see. I'd give it another month. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. That's it. Thank you. So I hope this video was helpful in helping you to understand that it is possible and it does work well if a person has one implant in one eye and a different implant in the other eye. We counsel all patients what to expect beforehand so they're not caught off guard. Quite often we use different types of implants to complement one another or to mask the side effects of one implant with an implant of a different type in the other eye. So with both eyes open, they have the overall quality and clarity of vision that they're seeking. Thank you for watching this video. Hope it was helpful and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.